Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. You have found yourself at another installment of New Stamps. Now what? The only web series wherein a middle-aged crafter, and a very stylish and refined one at that, takes a set of stamps I've never used before, and I, I, use, I use them. <laughs> yeah. Today I'm using a darling set of stamps designed by illustrator Anita Jerem for Colorado Craft Company. Will it turn out the way I envision in my mind? I don't know because I haven't quite fully realized the vision, but if you stick around, we're gonna build it together and that card is coming up next. So today I've got a brand new set from Colorado Craft Company. This is from designer Anita Jerem and this is called, thank you. So cute. And for the first time, I have my hands on coordinating dies. So I'm super excited about that. I'm going to be doing painting with distress inks today. And I've only pulled a few colors. And yes, I do have the brand new Kitsch Flamingo. This is coming soon in a cube. But for right now, I have the full size pad. I'm going to be using a little bit of the Artistico Extra White. I've got a couple brushes here and I will be using my little water media mat to smush down my colors and pick up and paint. I'm also gonna be using a VersaFine pad and let's get to making the card. So I'm gonna get my little, my little mousey out here, all right? I am going to pick up the stamp. I'm gonna pop him down and give myself plenty of room to color. And I think while I'm at it, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp the simple thank you because this also has a coordinating die and I think that will be very cool. But I'm just gonna stamp that in black so I'm not, you know, that's that's not gonna be fancy. I'm gonna stamp it down a little ways so I don't get it wet or do anything untoward to it. <laughs> okay, let's pick up the stamp with the misty door. And I'm gonna grab my little Debbie tool, which is based on the, the Chucky tool that many of you who follow Gina K Designs may have seen. It's a doorknob on a wooden block with some soft material. Uh, this is a, a common type of tool in printmaking, but people are making them now. And I have a link below if you wanna check out uh, Roy Wilson Woodworking. So, get a lot of questions on it and it really has helped my wrists because I need to come at things from the side and when I do that, it actually helps quite a bit with the pain that I experience in my wrists. You know, I got these mid 50 year old wrists and uh, it's just because I've been pointing and clicking for way too long. All right, I'm doing the rub down, giving it the old rub down, just to get sort of the residue off and we're gonna go ahead and stamp. I'm using the VersaFine because this is a watercolor friendly ink. Look at that weird shadow there. And I'm actually trying something different today. I'm, I'm filming live and I'm talking live, <laughs> like a live human, but I'm, I'm recording the audio just on my, my iPhone today. I've been having some issues with uh, the software that I use for filming live talky talk videos. And so I thought I would just do just the iPhone because honestly, <laughs> the audio is pretty, pretty okay on here as long as I don't yell or, you know, make any sudden movements. All right, I'm gonna stamp, stamp it down twice to get that great impression. And again, this tool allows me to go from the side and just add nice, even pressure. And I think that is gonna be great. So there is my stamp image. Now I'll get ready to start painting. So I'm gonna start smushing some color down and I don't need all of my kitsch. So I'm just gonna, that, honestly, that's probably enough for what I need. I'm gonna do a little pumice stone for my mousy's body. I'm going to do a little antique linen like that. And I brought out the green because I might, I might end up using this as well. I'm not sure yet, but I'm not ready for that yet. So we're gonna start here. And I'm also going to cut this apart because I don't, I don't wanna have my thank you as part of this. I'm gonna die cut that separately. And I'm, I may change my mind on the greeting, but that's, that's where we're at right now. So 
I've got a small brush here that I'm going to use. This is a number two, and this is just the Zen Royal Langnickel. It's a very affordable brush. Now we're gonna zoom in a little so that we can paint. I'll go in a little closer even still. Little, little secret about me, I am not a master painter, and so I want to encourage anyone who doesn't think they can paint <laughs> to use me as an example. I have never painted before making cards. I mean, I probably tried, you know, when I was, uh, oh, I don't know, in, uh, in elementary school. Let's see here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit so you can see. And, you know, I was probably told, I probably figured out from a pretty early age that I didn't have the ability to really paint that well. Oops, things are falling all over the place. And so I just didn't paint. And I think that's sad because I think we tell ourselves stories that we're not very good and honestly this is not this is not uh, rocket science my friends so let's try it all I'm doing here is bringing in this antique linen to color in the paper right and of course uh, which I didn't mention earlier I'm using the uh, versifying because it's a it's a ink that you can use with painting and you are not going to smudge or smear when water hits it. So don't use your dye inks for this. You know, don't use your, uh, if you have like Memento Tuxedo Black, you don't want that for this one, right? Because we want our ink to not bleed. So I'm gonna take a little more of this antique linen, smush it down, because what I would like to do is just deepen up here, a little shadow. And I don't really know a lot about light and shadow. <laughs> Um, I wish I knew more and maybe someday I'll learn more, but I just try to envision maybe lights coming this way, you know, and maybe everything's a little darker that way. <laughs> okay, cleaning off my brush, dipping in some clean water, and now I'm just going to mix up this pink like that. Now, did I just muck it up with the color? I, you know what, I'm going to smush a little more because I think I dipped in the wrong brush, but if not, we'll see. Okay, there we go. Let's get clean water. All right, let's come down here. Oh, no, that is kind of how it looks when it gets wet. Okay, I love it. It's going to be great. Both are fine. And here's what we're going to do. He should have a pink tail. And so we're going to bring in that color very carefully on his tail. You can kind of see why you need a, a delicate little brush because that, that gets you right in there, right? It's so great. I'm just going to make it darker at one end. Remember, I'm all my deepening shades there. And if his tail, if that's also skin, right? Or whatever that is on our, his, I think his feet should be pink as well, like that. Now I am gonna add a little pink to his ears after I color his body, but I also think the pencil should be pink. That's, that's how we're breaking up our color. Well, I mean, it could be yellow, but let's be real. Card making world, you it's your reality. So what do you, you know, what do you wanna do? I want my pencil body to be pink. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna pick up some more of this Kitsch Flamingo. The thing that I think is kind of fun about, you know, anytime you get a, a new color, there's so many ways you can apply it, right? Look how soft and delicate this looks. I am trying to create a little shading at the bottom there, but isn't that, isn't that cute, right? Kitsch Flamingo, you can barely, I mean, look at that. It's very subtle. And we're totally fine. All right, so now we're coming back to that, but I'm gonna wet down this color, which is the pumice stone. I add a little more water to it because I want it to be watery. I feel like I've been very inspired to just start painting more with distress inks. There's, you know, you can ink blend with them. You can do so many crafty things with them. And I just think, you know, if you get a little confidence, you know, it's almost like you got enough to be dangerous, you know what I mean? And I feel right now that I have enough confidence with Distress Ink, and I'm adding a little more water to my brush here, just to kind of make that softer out here. I feel like I have enough confidence right now to try things that I would never try before. And actually, I actually hit a bit of that pink there. I probably should have let it dry. But you know what? No one's going to complain. No one's going to get this card and be like, yeah, Kathy, you, um, I'm sorry, um, did you know that you actually, uh, you, you bled those two together? And I'd be like, dude, really? Do you not want my card? <laughs> you know, maybe they don't. 
Yeah, that's okay too. All right, remember, and now I'm getting more clean water just to bring this out and have this be very light off to the side. And we'll add a little more shading in a second. Yeah, the pink's really moving there. I probably should have waited. But look at that. That is, you know, that's so simple. And and all you have to do is have a have a small brush. And I think too, like if you, let's, uh, I'm gonna get a little more of the, ant. well, no, I think I might have enough. Um, you know, you can stamp a bunch of these out too. Oh, I just, I just made that too watery. You can stamp a bunch of these out and just kind of practice over and over again. Again, the light source thing, I don't know, everything's gonna be darker on that side. So the sun's coming from behind him. You could do it in the reverse too. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, the way I'm doing it, but I'm just gonna come in here and make the pencil tip in the antique linen. Cause I think, I think that makes sense, right? We're, we're, we're trying to create a little reality. So see that? That is so simple. And that's where I thought, and again, I could change my mind. That's where I thought maybe having, oh, I forgot his little other arm. <laughs> I do this sometimes when I'm talking and not paying attention. He's got another arm there, Kath. All right. Um, I might do a little wash of green paint behind him. And now I'm gonna just darken this up a little. See that? Just kind of darken that up, give that a little shadowing, come back in a little more over his nose. Oh, look at you, Kath. You're the shadow master. This is so exciting. Um, but again, I'm not a paint master. And I really think if, if you've been intimidated by it and you have distress inks in your stash, paint with them. You don't need fancy watercolors. <laughs> Take it from the girl who bought the most expensive watercolors and asked me how often I use them. I don't use them very often. But Distress Ink Cubes, I love them. All right, I think, oh, no, there's one more piece we have to do. And that is, I want to give him a little pink cheek. So what I'll do here is I'll try to pick up, and I'm going to test this off here just to make sure that I'm getting it. You can always test off to the side. I'm just going to pick up as much pink as I can get. And I'm just going to put a little pink right, right there, right on his cheek, right under his eye, like that and a little bit in his ears. Will that show up there? It's gonna be a little light. So just a little pink in those ears. So not, you know, it's it's super subtle, but he does have a pink cheek, pink feet. Maybe I'll just get that tail a little bit more like that. There we go. Oh, and that is the extent of my painting. Isn't that sweet? Gonna let that dry and then we're gonna cut it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tape this die into place. I'm first gonna cut this little cutie out because I'm not sure. I have an idea that I think I wanna do and I may or may not use this sentiment as is. I, I'm thinking that I'm not, but you'll have, well, I'll, let's die cut this and I'll, I'll stop the chatter. Isn't that cute? And it even cuts out Anita's signature. All right, we, we are, we, I need to get a card base prepped to show you what I'm thinking of next. So I'm gonna prep my card base and I'm gonna use a piece of Gina K Designs heavy base weight cardstock. And all I'm gonna do here is just score it. I'm not gonna fold it yet because I think I wanna try to figure out an ink blend that I could do with the cutie patootie here, okay? and have him be here in the center. Then, again, I'm not sure with the greeting, but I, I could, I might actually change it. I might actually change it up, because what I think would be cute to do is add this little bit of, like a shabby shutters, just a little outline in the green. Although the pink could be really cute too, but, but we're, gonna, we're gonna try the green. So I'm gonna take one of my blender brushes from Gina K. I actually have her whole new set I'm a big fan of blender brushes because I could, I just could never blend with foams and I'm getting, I'm getting, you know, pretty good. Not great, but I'm getting a lot better and the blender brushes really help. Now I want to grab, do I have any scraps of white cardstock? I do. And the reason why is I want to test out shabby shutters and see what I think. Cause I thought a little ink blending would be cute on the back of this. Oh, that is a good color. You know why I like it? I like it because it does have that sort of little vintage-y feel, right? And I think, would that be cute underneath Little Mousy? 
or catch foaming gum uh, and load it up. Now, I do use these brushes on just, you know, basically dye inks, which, you know, I guess this is technically that. Let's see what that looks like. A little bit of light. Um, and I would definitely make this light. But now, ooh, mm, can you see even see that? So we have shabby shutters or catch flamingo. Gosh, now I'm torn because I actually think Let's, let's do a little more of Kitsch Flamingo. Load it, tap it so you don't get full color. And I would be going, you know, out like that. And then up over the mouse. I'm just kind of envisioning on a piece of scrap paper because then I don't waste a whole card. But then if I put that down, what do you think? Is the pink? Oh, you know what? I think I have to go with the pink. Actually, please tell me in the comments below if I'm about to. Because you see how... That's cute, but that just kind of comes alive a little more. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Sorry, shabby shutters. Kitsch Flamingo wins the day. Okay, but I still need to figure this out. I still feel like just right, and this, the nice thing about this too, this is just a one layer card, right? So here, and I really do think having this simple thanks right there, not on there, but there, because see, he's still thinking. He's got his, he's got his little hand on his, you know, his, his little paw. Do mice have paws? I think they do. All right, so let's imagine that's our center right there. So you start in the center, and then you go up like that, coming down, and blend out, and then go over here. The nice thing about ink blending, right, is that, you know, you, you, you get better at it. I have gotten so much better at it, and I didn't think that was possible when I first started making cards. I thought, I'm never gonna do this. I'm never gonna get a soft blend. But I'm telling you, when you have the right amount of ink, see how he's right in the center there? Oh, that is so cute. It's, it's very subtle, right? Load up the brush, tap a little off, and come back into where I know his little, his little base is gonna be. Come on up. And I'm gonna come out just a little more out here where Anita's signature is. I think that is so great that the signature is part of the die and the stamp. Oh, so cute, okay. Like that, maybe a little more. You can always go a little wider and then you're basically fading to nothing. He gets back in or she, look at that. And I would, I do want it to be probably side to side, so I think I need to do a little more right there. Okay, a little more there kind of feel and it's amazing how much is on your brush sometimes too you have to kind of step back like I don't I don't know if the camera picks up all the subtlety sometimes but I do find sometimes that once I blend I realize oh my goodness I have more ink than I thought <laughs> look at the glow oh I love it all right let's let's uh let's stamp our greeting actually you know what I want a little more down here just a little we're just creating a glowy base for him so he can come down a little bit like that. That is super cute. Now I'm trying to decide. No, I, I, I'm, I got the direction. Let me grab my Misty and we will stamp the greeting. So I think just a little thanks right there would be so adorable. I mean, could you put thank you very much? No, you know what? No, I'm going to be thanks. Um, one thing that I hope you can take away from today's video is painting does not have to be really over the top. This is one, two, three colors and a simple bit of ink blending and, and you can do that, right? Like then you're gonna have this beautiful kind of cohesive feel and die cutting this and I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna pop it up on some, uh, what's it called? foam tape. I want to see if that's straight though. I, I always forget to grab them because they're on the shelf behind me. So I like that placement. Oh, I just poked my paper. Oh, can't be. I literally might. Let's just, let's buff that out. Can we buff that out? Sure. I poked my paper. Okay. Pick this up. Okay. And now all I'm going to do here is just come here, come here, 
come here and hold that there. Did you see how that moved ever so slightly? That way I know this is gonna be straight and then I can pick it up with the misty door. Oh yeah, baby, that is as straight as an arrow. That's why these creative corners are kind of cool. And I need to remember that more often because as I told you, I forget. Now for the ink, to, I'm not gonna use the VersaFine for this one because I don't wanna wait for it to dry. So I'm just gonna use my Gina K Cube. This is Black Onyx, a nice inky black ink. And I will come over here, make sure, oh yeah, let's make sure we're pressed into the corner. That needs to double check, all right? Yeah, I think we're good. And got some mucky muck on there. All right, gonna ink this up and I'll prop, oh, actually, let's just do a little rubbing. Residue be gone. I know you can also use like a pencil eraser, like a pink pearl, and it takes that coating off. And of course, stamps get way more conditioned with the more you use them. So they're gonna get fabulous over time. And I might actually stamp this twice because we are gonna be stamping over a tiny bit of distress ink, which is already dry, but let's bring it down. And again, I bring in my tool. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Okay, and lift. Oh, yeah, we aren't stamping that again because we nailed it. So I wanna show you added all this foam tape to the back, even just a little bit on Anita's signature so that everything here can be supported. <laughs> okay, let's fold like that. Take my bone folder here and press. Got a nice press. Okay. I am going to tape my card base closed because I cannot see for placing elements down if it is not flat. And the thing is too, it's like when you have a really simple card, like something like this, right? It's, 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 it doesn't take much to kind of throw off the balance. So let's see here. Oh my God, seriously, it's so simple, but it's so cute. All right, where's my little doohickey thing to remove these guys? Also, you know, if there's any warping from the watercolor, and, and there shouldn't be much, right? There's a little curvature to this, but uh, the foam tape, or the foam squares, and these, by the way, are the thin foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesives. These are some of my favorite because um, they just have the right amount of loft for me. I don't I don't, I love dimension, but sometimes I don't want too much dimension. You know, sometimes you cross the line and well, if, you, if you're a line crosser, if you're a dimensional line crosser, you know what I'm talking about. I think I have this idea of crossing dimensions because I've been watching, uh, oh, what is that show? Oh, His Dark Materials. I started watching on uh, the HBO and uh, kind of loving it. That Lin-Manuel Miranda, now he's got a career. Okay. Um, let's get all of this off. But seriously, the, the actress who plays Lyra, could she be any cuter? Okay, now we're gonna get our tweezers because we're just, I'm not throwing away my shot here. Now I can't get off of Lin-Manuel. Okay, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna hover because I want about the same space here as here, right? And if this is a little, but I want Anita's, no, yeah, I want Anita's name to be straight. So, this is basically the look. And press down. Oh, isn't that sweet with the little shadow? Oh my goodness. It is just so sweet. It's so simple. But if you got a card like that, wouldn't you be like, oh, for cute. Should we add a little sparkle and shine? Yeah, let's do it. So I'm in a bit of a rut, but it's a rut that I kind of love, and that is this. Silver sequins, you know, when in doubt, silver sequin, right? They're just, they're neutral. They're not going to hurt anything. They're going to add that little bit of shine, but at the same time, you know, you're not going to have something that detracts from your piece. And, oh, come on now. Okay, I got a little, by the way, this is the Connect glue. And for me, what I'm always hoping when I add a little, oh, come, ah, get over there. Oh, when I add a little shine to a card, and actually now I want that up a little, is that it just accents the card, right? It doesn't 
Oh, you know what? I think I need a new, okay. We're gonna be, no, it's it's stuck, okay. Um, I don't want it to be a, a huge detraction. I just want it to be an accent, right? I want it to not take away from the core of the design. And that is also why I have these placed in such a way that there is a connection to whatever's going on, right? The center core, the sequins extend out. I'm not good at, you know, random sort of willy-nilly placement. I, believe me, I tried. <laughs> I've tried in my life. Let's tuck. I also love that you can tuck your sequin under if you're popped up. But I like when things have a direct relationship and a predictability. So these are coming out from the illustration. And there are five of them, and five or odd numbers in general are very pleasing in design. They feel uh, somewhat more energized than uh, symmetrical, even numbered. And that is the finished card. In fact, I have a I have a video that I did a while back about sequin placement, and I will uh, I'll pop a card up here in this area if you want to see that design video. But that is my finished card. So look how simple this is. Just like simple watercolor, simple ink blending, a little bit of shine, right? Let me grab a pink envelope. Take a little pink envelope with that, pop that in the mail, and even you could stamp on the outside. You know, you could stamp a little teaser. You could put a little, you know, well, actually, should we just do it? We're gonna do it, I think. You got your cute little envelope, and I actually think this color, um, I'm gonna put this flat first. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do the old free range stamping. I'm gonna pick that up with one of my Gina K Designs comfort blocks. And where's where's my ink cube? You had it. Oh yeah. Okay. And actually, do I need to just tack that down a little bit? I think I'm going to. Let's go here. You gotta wish me luck, friends, because you know the free range stamping. But I'm committed to doing more on the envelopes and showing that as part of my video because I love to put. Oh, yeah. See, this might have benefited from the misty because you can kind of see how it pools a little bit. Um, I'm gonna wipe that away like that. Sometimes too, it helps to condition a stamp. I'm just going to stamp this off. Make sure it's dry. Um, by just stamping a couple times, right? Stamp a few times, clean it off. Let's ink that up again. Maybe I do want the VersaFine here. Oh no, that's taking the ink better. Again, stamps will condition over time. Trust in the process ink up really well. This is a little harder on, on mama's wrist, but here's what we're going to do. We'll just stamp. Ah, give it time to transfer. I That's pretty good, Gab. And let's pick you back up now that we don't need the tape on there. How cute is that, right? Right? They open it up. They get the little thanks, the pink. I love it. I think it turned out great. This video can remind you, you don't have to be fancy. I mean, you can be fancy, but you don't have to be fancy and you can still have beautiful results. Thanks so much for watching. All links can be found below the video and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. I'm so fancy. This is my Lord of the Rings hairstyle. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.